Pastor Kevin Diekelman, what's your title with this One Heart for Israel? I'm the CEO of One Heart for Israel. You're in the Bible Belt now. How do you feel there? It's very interesting to be in the Bible Belt. Honestly, it's a great location and great people there. Um, you know, a large population of them attend churches on Sundays. And so it's very easy to become a Christian and easy to go to church there. Uh, what we need to do is we need to make them a little bit more uh, activated into their faith so that they can be a little bit more advocates toward uh, what's going on in the world today. Um, okay, what sort of things are you involved in doing? Okay, our work is really twofold, actually three at this point in time. Uh, we were involved in a project that just relaunched the uh, uh, radio station Voice of Hope into Israel. Voice of Hope was a radio station in Israel drawn, launched by George Otis many years ago. In 2000, the radio station was bombed uh, up north, and we just have gone on the air three weeks ago to rebroadcast Voice of Hope, and it is a 100,000-watt radio station broadcasting the Bible and, and humanitarian stories and information into the Muslim countries, actually reaching from Finland to Russia to Egypt. The second, other parts of our work is we are doing educational work, taking tours of Israel, educational tours of Israel, for pastors, uh, professors, educators, and young, young men and women that will become uh, involved in ministry in the future. So we can educate them to the land and the values and the cultures of Israel in, in retrospect to how it fits into scripture and how it can enhance and equip them in their teaching and their education in the future. The other thing we're doing is we're doing curriculum in Christian universities. Up until four years ago, there wasn't one of the 312 Christian universities in America that had a curriculum in the history of Israel. And so now we have developed a history of the Israel curriculum and other curriculums such as startup country, a, a startup country curriculum. And so we are now writing and, and putting curriculum in the universities uh, to build advocacy in Israel. The reason is because we believe this. There are all, a lot of groups that have students on stage and uh, students in campuses that are fighting the BDS movement and all the issues it face. We want to reach the professors. And we get to the professors, we can affect the universities. So that's what we're going after. But don't the uh, Arabs have tremendous endowments for this specific point of promoting the uh, pro-Palestinian, anti-Zionist narrative within the universities? They do, very much so. It's a, it's a well-funded e uh, effort that they're putting forward. But here's the thing. This is a, this is a, a war of, of, of ideas and a war of not just philosophies, but a war of beliefs. And in all of history, Christianity and Jews have died, been willing to die, and put everything on the line for what they believe. Now we are confronted for the first time in history by a group of people that believe this and are willing to die for this, but they don't put the value in life, they put the value in death. We put the value in life. The message is very different. What's your concern about the, uh, this new uh, axis of leftist and Islamist that's uh, permeating the American college campuses? You know, it, it's, a, it, it's a very difficult situation on college campuses because students attend classes that are taught by professors that are so left that they will not allow the students to think on their own. I went to a university and took a university to Israel, and one of the professors said to me, why are you so, so bent on building advocacy for Israel? My answer to that was, what are you afraid the students are going to learn? You are there to make sure that they understand how to learn and how to analyze different beliefs, different philosophies, and different thoughts. But I don't see that going on here. I see a resistance to the openness of both sides. And I'm, I'm a Christian pastor. I believe if you put the Bible on the shelf, on the, and, and the Quran and the Bhagavad Gita and all the books on, this, on the table together and you weigh them and you analyze them and you check them out, I think one's going to stand and it's going to be the Bible. I think even Islam would agree with that. The problem that Islam has is they have a demarcation point by which they leave the scriptures of the Bible and start into their own path. Um, is there, being there in the South, do you notice, is, is there more of a uh, an orientation of uh, deicide or uh, 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 supersessionalism than there is in California, the West Coast, where we are here? Not necessarily. I, I think just the opposite. Yeah. 
I just an enormous amount of opportunity there to, uh, to to educate people and bring people into an understanding from their roots of their church going life for, for years just to, to supplement their knowledge and understanding of what Israel is and who they are and I don't I haven't I haven't seen hardly any really uh, of that um, in, the, in the south where I am at at this point in time of course I'm in a, I'm in a very interesting place I'm in Huntsville Alabama it's an eclectic city that is made up, you know, it houses NASA and, and many uh, contractors of our defense programs. And so it's made up of people that understand and know and understand how you defend a nation and what you stand by and principles and discipline and morality and patriotism. So from that comes a mindset that there is a reason to fight for something that you believe and you must believe in what you will fight for. But would Jews be safe living there? Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't mean just in a professional sense, but uh, in going to bars, uh, could, a, could a Jew wear a yarmulke there? Absolutely. There's a great Jewish community in Huntsville, Alabama, actually throughout all of Alabama. Uh, a, a wonderful Jewish community. And we work very well together in tandem with them. Amazing rabbis that are open to having dialogue with us and the openness of the Christian community, not to try to change them, but to first join hands and become friends with them so we understand each other. <laughs> no, wonderful day, celebrate Israel. Yes, yes. Um, have you been to the show before? Yes, I have. The, the work we must do, the work we must do as a Christian community is this. We must understand that our roots come from Judaism. Our roots come from what we know as the Old Testament. These are our roots. And without the root, the tree dies. So we must attach ourselves to the root and must be grafted into the roots of their faith and our faith, which is the foundation of who we are. We, Jesus was a Jew. The apostles were Jewish. The foundation of all that we believe in of the Christian church was Jewish. That doesn't mean we become Jewish, but it means we understand the values and there is so much to learn from the teaching that they have understood for centuries that would enhance our faith our knowledge and our understanding of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. How do you feel being here surrounded by so much Zionism? It's wonderful. It's wonderful. I'm at home in Zion, okay? <laughs> so absolutely, yeah, yeah. And you're, you're next to the booth of the Friends of the IDF? We chose our booth so we would be next to the Friends of the IDF. Oh, really? Yes, we did. We chose to be next to them because we are very, very dear friends with them. Uh, the IDF is on the front lines of the defense of democracy and Judeo-Christian values in the world today. The battlefield is the Mideast, and the first line of defense is the IDF. And so we stand behind them, we stand with them, we bless them, and uh, my wife and I actually uh, help with a lot of the events there because we just have such a, a, a feeling of, of support for them. There are volunteer opportunities for Americans to go and volunteer on Israeli army bases and help out. Are you familiar with any of this? Yes, absolutely. Yes, yes. Have you heard of Christians, American Christians, going and helping out? We have someone, some people that have gone through our organization that are involved in that, yes. Yes, we have one of the men that attended my church for a time that, that uh, actually was, uh, was there during one of the wars as a consultant. He was part, part of the, milit part, part of the uh, police force here in America, a particular police force, he was there helping out as a consultant because of his relationship with the IDF. Oh, that's nice. Of course, some Americans who go there, you know, wind up in the kitchens helping out too. So it's not all glamorous like that, but would you encourage Christians to, to take that uh, as a vacation or for retirees? Serving is serving. It doesn't matter where you serve. If you're a servant, you'll serve wherever you're called to serve. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.